My name is Matt Price and uh, I am a photographer. I have been a photographer for like 15 years. Now I work for CCS as the brand director there. Still shoot skate photos, but uh, uh, less photos these days, more desk work. I wanted to take pictures because of skateboarding. I got my first board when I was nine. Got really into it maybe around 10 or 11. Through that, just skated with friends in Phoenix area with like bum rides to the skate parks and stuff. Then in high school, I basically figured out that, oh, I could take pictures of skateboarding. It was all born out of like, oh, this is just how I can be around skating more. Like I can take pictures of it and be out on sessions and in the streets and like at spots that I'm not gonna skate, but I can still be like in the mix and with my friends and like be a part of this whole, process that like we'd watch in videos and you just wanted to like emulate. My very first camera my grandma bought for me that was like a point and shoot. I have a bunch of photos from my uh, 12th birthday. We went to uh, Flagstaff, which is up north in Arizona. My dad drove like a van full of me and my friends, all the eighth graders or seventh graders that I knew that skated. And we all went to Flagstaff to go skate a skate park up there and I shot like four rolls that day of just point and shoot nonsense. But that, that 12th, 12th birthday trip was like the first taste I really ever got of like taking skate pictures. I mean, I didn't know it was like a career necessarily, but I like knew I wanted to do it. When I was like 16, I think, I, I figured out like a kit that I could get for fairly cheap. I got like one of the Rebel cameras, you know, and a Sigma fisheye, and it was gonna cost like just shy of a thousand bucks maybe, and a flash or something. The kit I wanted was like a grand. So basically my grandma, uh, she was like, well, we're gonna teach you about credit. So she took me to the bank, she co-signed on a loan for $1,000, like a personal loan. She gave me the booklet, like the coupon booklet, and was like, all right, here you go. You gotta pay 50 bucks a month until this is all paid off. If you don't, you screw me. Like, don't ruin my credit, basically. And that was like, that struck like fear into me. I was like, I don't wanna ruin her credit, that's, oh God. So sure enough, I, I, bought the, I bought the Rebel, I bought the Sigma, I bought a Flash. And uh, yeah, I had, and I had a payment on it every month. So I had a fish eye and I was like, oh shit, I got a fish eye. I'm gonna go shoot skating. And I had some friends at the time that were like pretty good, significantly better than me. So I started shooting all these fish eye photos of my buddies, Mike and my friend Bucky. And like, there was a website at the time that I found called skateboardphotography.com. That is a forum that you can post your photos on and talk to other skate photographers. I was just in Phoenix, like with my friends. Like I didn't know anyone in the industry. I didn't know anyone who shot photos. I didn't know anyone who filmed and I was just kind of trying to figure it all out from watching videos and looking at magazines. And then all of a sudden at 16, this website has everything. It just taught me the basics. That's another funny thing, I'm colorblind. So when I started shooting uh, slide film, I wanted to shoot Velvia because it had like crazy rich colors, like almost too much sometimes, you know, it looks insane. And I'd post photos in this uh, photo critique forum they had. And just, this was my first taste of like the internet being ruthless because I'd like get a photo and I'd be like, this one's pretty sick. I think they're gonna like this one. I put it up there and like check in an hour later and it would be like, what the fuck is this bullshit? Like this dude, the, the colors are trash, like composition, like get out of here, like sell your fish eye, like just ripping me to shreds. So through this process of like posting the photos on the internet, getting critiques, going back out, shooting more. And also that's how I met Grant Britton. He was on the forum. Maybe Matt McCaro, who's like my photo mentor as well, like in the industry who I met through that website. He was like, oh yeah, here's the address to the skateboard mag, send them photos. And I was like, okay. Like, so I sent a page of photos with no information. Not even my name. I just sent, I took a sheet of Hasselblad like positives of slides and just sent them to the address of the skateboard mag with Grant's name on it and that was it. And then like, I get a message from him a week later. He's like, hey, did you send these slides with nothing on them? And I was like, oh yeah. And he goes, okay, next time put your name on them. And the name of the people skating and the tricks and stuff. And I was like, oh, okay. But in my head, I was like, oh, I just wanted him to like look at them. Like I was like, I wasn't submitting them. I was just showing him for critique. And then a day later he was like, hey, we want to use this photo of this guy doing Ollie Fakey in the next issue. And it was just kind of like, what the fuck? Like that. I, I got extremely lucky in this whole career. Like, it's like, it's mostly luck. Then from there, I was sending some stuff to Transworld, sending stuff to Thrasher. I had, had a few things run in kind of all the major mags in about the next six months. The part where I did work hard and it wasn't luck was I would drive to the skateboard mag and say what's up and hang out, drive to Transworld. I, I just, I don't know how I knew it was important, but I knew it was important to like be around these guys. And I knew it was important to like be an actual human to them and not just sending photographs. And yeah, after that first six months of those kind of things, I went in one day and uh, Grant and Swift were like, hey, can we talk to Price in private, please? 
And I was like, oh, fuck. I was just like, what? I don't even know what I could have done at that point in time to fuck up, but I knew I fucked up. In my, like, in my heart, I was like, oh, I fucked something up. Oh, fuck, they're gonna yell at me. This is, and I was like shaking. I think, like, my hands were shaking. Like, I went to the office just like, What's up, guys? And I think they're, they were like fucking with him. Like Grant was even like, Swift, he's sweating. Why do you think he's sweating? And I was just like, oh my God, what is going on here? This is so weird. And uh, they asked me that day if I wanted to like be on retainer and be like one of the staff photographers at the magazine and like told me I would get paid. You know, I was like, I think at the time it was like 750 bucks a month was your monthly retainer. And again, it was just like, Pah. it was like this crazy like head spinning moment of like, again, I had my first photo run six months before that. First Cubs, Aaron Susky, doing a 5-0 in Tucson, Arizona. I shot like a bunch of stuff in this issue, actually. That was the synchronized Ollie DeFakey of Brian Anderson, Sean Malta, Rick Howard, Alex Olson, Eric Costin, Ernie Torres, Ted DeGro, and Guy Mariano. Er Ernie and Ted just fucking right place, right time on that one. <laughs> I was on staff as a photographer from age 19 to like 26, maybe. And then at age 26 was when I got hired as the photo editor. And I moved to Oceanside and I worked in the office for a couple years. Kind of quickly figured out that like, even though I love all those dudes and it was rad, that the office thing isn't necessarily for me. I just ended up going back to being a photographer for the last like six months or so I was there. We used to do these things in the skateboard mag called Exposed, where you just, it was just a two page spread of photos with a little story and I just always thought, why don't, why isn't that just the whole magazine? Like, wh to me, that was like it. That's all you need. Like, you just need a, a handful of, a spread of photos and a little explanation. And that's like, I always would push, I was like, we should just do a side zine that comes out quarterly that's called Exposed. And it's literally like, you know, 40 pages of Exposed because people like it. And we never did, but I guess that's what I'm doing now. <laughs> that's basically what I'm trying to do for the golden hour. So this is like the first bound draft of it. When I was living in Portland, I got the itch and I wanted to like shoot more. I just hadn't done it in a while. And so I didn't even really, I didn't know Dane Brady. I met him like once and I just, I was a fan of his skating and I just hit him up and was like, hey, let's go take pictures, you know? And we went and skated one night and we shot a couple of photos and right off the bat, I think we just clicked and he liked the way I wanted to do things. I really liked the way he wanted to do things. We wanted to work together on making some cool photos for nothing else other than just for fun. It's cool when you don't have like dumb magazine rules, like you can just, you don't have to have all this other bullshit, you can just put the intro and then your name and that's it. <laughs> Broke my fish eye this day, as, as to be expected. <laughs> that whole session was rad, it was like, kick my lens. And they were both like, what? And I was having him and Emil both try and kick my lens, and so we got that one obviously, and then uh, the fucking one that was uh, the solo magazine cover. Pontus did like a guest edited issue and he used that one for the cover. And that one's kind of cool because you can see that little, see that circle? That's where his foot is making contact with that lens. And that's literally his foot touching it right there. And this is all just a side project from my full-time job, which is more than full-time, you know? So it's, it took a long time to actually happen. So it's been about a year now and we're about to do issue two. It's, it's pretty much laid out and done. It's a retrospective of the four years that I spent like traveling with iPath and with Fred Gall. Like Fred Gall is one of these people that's like, larger than life, I think, to all of skateboarding, and especially me, after having spent so much time with him. He's one of the most unique individuals I've ever met in my life, in, in a way that, like, I've never truly loved and hated someone at the same time, like, so much. Like, it's just, he it kind of, like, blows your mind. You didn't know you could feel this way about a person. One of the coolest things about this is, uh, I sent Fred, like, a black and white printed copy of it, and I was like, just write notes on everything. Draw, do anything. And Fred went through and wrote captions way better than mine for everything. So we ended up changing the layout and the layout is instead of all my captions, we just put all his handwritten captions in there. So the whole thing is like narrated by Fred in his voice, in his handwriting. And, uh, and it's insane. Look at that shot. Matt Price is an amazing photographer and human being. <laughs> that did not make it in the issue, but thank you, Fred. I'm really proud of it. Just like issue one, I'm proud of it in such a different way. It's just a, a story that I thought it should be told. I think it's important too to like follow what you're stoked on. It's easy to do things that are in your wheelhouse because you have a, you, know, you shoot with this skater all the time or you're in this place all the time. But like, if you're a fan of something, like seek it out and do it. Like 
all my favorite from like hitting up Ryan Lay on MySpace when I was 16 to like calling Dane when I moved to Portland, like people I didn't know at all that I was like, I just like their skating, I wanna shoot it, you know? And I think that that's really important to do. And as you get older, it's like almost feels embarrassing or like you shouldn't have to do that. But like I DM skaters I don't know sometimes just cause I'm like, oh, I like their skating. I just wanna take their picture, you know? And like not trying to think like, oh, like you may know me or whatever. I don't know, some weird thing, but it's like, I think it's just about following what you're stoked on. And if you want to make something with, the, with that person, like present the idea. Like most of the time people are going to be stoked and want to do things if you're really stoked on what they do.